If you're suffering from pain in the pelvic or the genital area and have seen numerous specialists but despite that no cause can be found, then this video on pudendal neuralgia might provide you with some useful information. The main aim of my making this video is to raise awareness about this condition, not only amongst the patients but also amongst the medical fraternity. Hi, I'm Dr. Amod Manocha. I'm a pain specialist and I work at the Max Hospital in Delhi as the head of the pain management services. Let me describe a typical patient who presents to my clinic uh, with this problem. So most patients who present to my clinic would be young or middle-aged male or female patients with pelvic pain. Before they come to my clinic, they've normally seen uh, numerous specialists, which may include urologists, general surgeons, neurologists, gynecologists, and often uh, internal medicine specialists. They've had numerous investigations, but despite that, no cause can be found which can explain their pain symptoms and often their life is at a standstill because it affects not only their uh, working capacity but also their sitting ability and their sexual life. These patients have normally done a lot of internet research before they can come to the diagnosis or come to the suspicion that pudendal nerve might be the problem in their case. So let me describe the symptoms which with these patients present. So the main uh, presenting complaint is pelvic pain, uh, which may feel like a burning, shooting, aching sensation. Uh, and this may be located in the genital area, uh, such as the penis or the scrotum, or the vagina or the labia or the perineal area. The perineal area is the area high up uh, in between the two legs. The pain may also be located uh, close to the sit bones and often it goes down on the inner side of the leg. Now this pain uh, is associated with urinary symptoms and most patients describe it as, as if they have got a urinary infection, which means they say they have to go to uh, pass urine more often. Uh, there's often pain while they're uh, passing urine accompanied by a burning sensation. Along with this, they may have um, bowel symptoms or stool symptoms such as increased urge to open bowels, uh, irritation or itching sensation around the area when they're uh, passing stool or uh, even pain when they're passing stool. Along with this, one of the other major symptoms is sexual dysfunction, which means they have pain when they're aroused, when they're having intercourse or when they're having an orgasm. They can, in males especially, they can be pain after ejaculation as well. And you can understand the implications of this and um, how this can affect the life of people. Before we move any further, I think it's important to know a little bit more about the pudendal nerve. So pudendal nerve is one of the major nerves in the pelvis and there is one on each side. Now this nerve has an important role in controlling the urine and the stool control. And it also carries the sensation to the genital area. So let me explain you a little bit more with the help of this animation model. So um, if I remove the skin and the muscles and the yellow ones you see are the nerves. Now, the one which I've highlighted is the pudendal nerve, and you can appreciate that it comes out of the spine and travels towards the front. If I rotate the spine, then you can see this clearly, and this nerve which you see is the pudendal nerve. Now, to help you understand and appreciate it a little bit more, let me isolate the nerve. So what you see now is the pudendal nerve coming out of the spine and then traveling forwards. And during its course, it will give different branches which will go to different areas like the rectal area, the genital area and the perineal area. So if I put the skin back, then you will be able to appreciate where this nerve is located and uh, what's its course. Let's move further and talk about what can cause the pudendal neuralgia symptoms. So any pressure on the nerve as while cycling or bike riding or prolonged sitting can lead to the appearance of the typical symptoms and often for this reason this condition is also known as the cyclist syndrome stretching of the nerve as during childbirth can also lead to the typical symptoms other causes of pudendal neuralgia can include injury to the nerve as while a surgery or a trauma or infections in the area such as herpes now this condition can be quite challenging to diagnose and what we sometimes use is special MRI scans to look at these nerves 
Uh, depending on the availability, we may also use nerve conduction tests and these are special tests. Uh, but what can help us uh, diagnose with a little bit more confidence is diagnostic nerve blocks. So if we numb these nerves with the help of injections and the pain goes away, then that can be a clue uh, to the diagnosis. So uh, for treating this condition, what we use is a multidisciplinary approach, which means we use different modalities to, together to try and give you the maximum uh, benefit from it. We have to undertake some lifestyle modifications, which are aimed at protecting the nerve, giving it an opportunity to heal. Now, these lifestyle modifications include using a special cushion while we are sitting, uh, avoiding tight clothes uh, to avoid pressure on the nerve, avoiding constipation so that the nerve does not get further damaged, avoiding things like bike riding, avoiding things like horse riding and prolonged sitting. Along with this, what we use is physiotherapy aimed at specifically the pelvic floor muscles. Uh, we also use medications, which are special type of medications which works in the nerves and are called neuropathic medications. Now these medications can take some time to produce their effect and often we have to start with a lower dose and then gradually increase the dose till you get the benefits from it. Another important modality what we use in the treatment is uh, injections. We've discussed before how these injections can help us in confirming the diagnosis and also they can help in providing relief. Now, uh, the initial injections which we often do are nerve blocks and these are performed under either X-ray guidance or ultrasound guidance. Sometimes we have to combine the two modalities that is the X-rays and the ultrasound to locate the nerve and to block the nerve. If this gives you prolonged relief, that's very good. If it doesn't, then uh, we use another modality which is called pulse radio frequency where we are using the radio frequency to prolong the effect of the pain relief or the nerve block and uh, sometimes along with these we also use trigger point injections in the pelvic muscles which means we are trying to subdue the trigger points in the pelvic muscles which might be causing more pain and flare-ups so um, thank you for listening to me and I hope whatever I've said is useful to you and if you have any questions please do post them in the comment section and I'll try and answer them thank you once again